30 miles an hour or 48 kilometers an hour if you're metric is seriously fast. Riding along the flat at this speed feels incredible. And while we regularly see pro cyclists barreling along at this rapid pace, for the rest of us mere mortals, it can feel out of reach or impossible to sustain for a long period of time. Or is it? Using the latest science and technology, I'm gonna try and find out what is the lowest power required to ride at 30 miles an hour for 10 miles and see if I can do it. Riding at 30 miles an hour on a drop bar road bike like this, it feels rapid, but it's really difficult. And of course, it's easy to do it for short periods of time if you have a tailwind or a descent or maybe both. But what I'm talking about is doing it for a sustained period on an out and back course or a loop where the changes in gradients and wind direction average out. It really is tough and takes a huge amount of power from the rider to sustain. But fortunately, because of maths and science, we can calculate exactly what's required. The main forces that I need to overcome are aerodynamic drag and friction. And using a sensor array mounted to the front of my bike, I can accurately measure my aerodynamic drag and work out my drag coefficient. This is a really smart bit of kit. It was crammed packed full of super sensitive lab grade sensors and components. And it'll allow me to work out my drag coefficient. And from that, I'm gonna do some maths and work out the exact amount of power I need to produce in order to go 30 miles an hour. From the Aero Lab, I can now work out that my drag coefficient or CDA on a standard road bike with sort of standard equipment is around 0.26 to 0.28. Now you don't need to worry about that number. The main thing that you need to take from it is that I can now use that to work out the exact amount of power I need to produce to travel at 30 miles an hour. With regards to overcoming friction, we can make fairly accurate assumptions about the amount of energy lost in my drivetrain thanks to research carried out by companies like Muckoff. Then the next source of friction, my tyres, again, companies like Pirelli have done extensive research measuring the rolling resistance of their tyres, and so therefore, these values are known. What isn't known is the rolling resistance of the road surface, but the Aero Lab can calculate this using complicated sensors and algorithms and account for it. But generally speaking, rule of thumb, smoother roads are considerably faster. The last big thing that makes a difference as to how fast you go is the weather. And it's something that's often overlooked, but it makes a huge difference. Different weather conditions, can vary your speed dramatically. And generally speaking, it's all about the air density. So less dense air is thinner. And therefore, it's easier to punch through it as you're riding along. Whereas denser air is thicker and slower. Think of it like trying to swim through water or custard. I mean, I've never tried it, but in my imagination, it's much harder to swim through custard put into context of something like the hour record, air density makes a huge amount of difference. It could easily be the difference between two kilometers traveled further if you've got good conditions. And a great example is Bradley Wiggins. He had really dense air when he did his hour record and consequently didn't go anywhere near as far as what he could have done, but still did an amazing performance. It really makes you think. And the, uh, the Aero Lab, well, that can, that can calculate air density too and factor it in. Now, with all that considered and factored in, we can calculate that the amount of power that I need to produce to travel at 30 miles an hour on an out and back section of flat road 
uh, that's smooth and in decent weather conditions is around 430 watts, which I'm gonna try to do now. Four, 430 watts is savage. It's really tough. I mean, like, a, a, a Tour de France Pro can sustain that power for around an hour, but I can do it for about well, four minutes and then I'm absolutely toast. But I still think that I can ride at 30 miles an hour sustained. I just need to rethink my equipment and, uh, and my setup. <sighs> I'm gonna start with clothing because my body is the single biggest source of aerodynamic drag. Therefore, what I cover it in is phenomenally important. I mean, I, I feel faster already. To reduce my drag, I need to make myself as slippery through the air as possible. And looking head on, you can see the rider's body presents way more area to the wind than the bike. Now, no pins makes cutting edge aerodynamic clothing for some of the world's best cyclists. And you may remember, I used one of their custom suits in my hour record. Just to be clear, I'm not one of the world's best cyclists. But thankfully, they've decided to help me again with a bespoke suit made to fit me perfectly after they measured me with lasers. So what is special about this state-of-the-art skin suit? What makes it cutting edge? Well, it features a proprietary speed scales fabric developed with AeroCoach, which is designed to reduce drag. Normally, when air passes over objects like your arms, the airflow will detach, creating an area of low pressure behind you, causing drag and slowing you down. But the special textured surface on the speed scales can re-energize the airflow and trick it into following the contour of an object rather than just detaching. For example, around the arms. Now streaming the air like this stops the low pressure behind it and reduces drag. You've also got special seams and trip strips which do a similar thing, tripping the air from laminar to turbulent flow and encouraging it to stick to the body longer before separating. By having a suit custom made like this, the placement of the trip strips and the stretch of the different textured fabrics are better optimised. I mean, I feel like I'm even like walking faster wearing all this. As amazing as this suit is, unfortunately, it's not going to cut it on its own. I'm going to need to switch bikes, so I'm swapping to the GCN Orbea Ordu TT bike, which you may remember that Sai used to embarrass us in two versus one, three versus, but you get the idea. Anyway, I've tricked it out, I've modified it, and I've made it even faster. I mean, it even looks fast stood still. Um, can we cut to an A-team style montage of me tricking the bike out? I mean, just look at it. It's it's just ridiculous, isn't it? I've completely tricked it out. So we've got a disc wheel on the back. We've got one by with a massive 58 tooth dinner plate, a special muck off treated chain, what shop aero extensions fitted on the bike now and special Pirelli TT tires. There's a lot of detail here, a lot of geekery and nerdery gone on to make it as fast as possible and far too much to talk about in this video without making it excessively long. So I've done a separate video on the tech channel if you want to find out about all the modifications I've done to this to make it as fast as possible. I've also switched my helmet for a Giro Aerohead TT helmet because it's considerably faster than a standard road helmet. And the Aerolab sensor is really useful for looking at you know, different variables that you can change and tweaking different things to do with your position. For example, I've looked at my helmet position when I'm riding and I found that there's actually quite a big difference in my aerodynamic drag depending on where I position my head. For example, this position is far more aerodynamic than this position and the key sort of thing I'm trying to do is have a nice parallel channel between the visor and my forearms. That seems to be very fast. With all the modifications and improvements in my equipment and position on the bike, 
30 miles an hour for 10 miles starts to become possible. But it's still gonna take a phenomenal effort from me to achieve this. I'm gonna need to ride as hard as I can, but it is possible, I think. So, I mean, I've just gotta give it a go now. I've gotta race against the clock. Time for a time trial. Right. Now at this point, I've gone off to do a 10 mile time trial hosted by Monmouth Shawheelers on the R1017 TT course. But we can't film that because filming with a motorbike would affect the aerodynamics and give me an unfair advantage. The Aerolab sensor says so. Even when 15 meters in front of me, the camera bike still helps and gives me an advantage. And I want this to be legit, pure. I want to try and do it on my own. So instead, here is a quick montage of me riding the time trial bike, hopefully looking fast. See you on the other side. I've uh, just completed the 10 miles and I've done it. I've scraped in under 20 minutes and done it in 19 minutes, 57 seconds. So just like, just scraped in. And uh, well, that equates for 10 miles, an average speed of 30.07 miles per hour. So over 30 miles an hour or 20 or 48.4 kilometers an hour. I'm absolutely delighted. Um, yeah, really pleased with that, oh, so quick. But what was the power that I managed to do it with? Well, I'm gonna tell you, but first, I'm gonna get my coat, it's a bit chilly now, and I'm, um, I'm gonna get a pint. Priorities. Um, when I said pint, I, I actually meant sparkling water because I'm a serious athlete now. Um, and the power was just 326 watts which is mad. I mean, that's, that's really good power for me, but it definitely shows that aero works because you know, I've gone from needing 430 watts on a road bike down to just 326 watts. I mean, that's, that's mental. I'm really pleased with that. I think it's, it's getting close to the minimum watts that, that I would need. I could get away with less watts if I was perhaps on a faster course or had really fast, warm weather conditions but it's definitely down there. And when it's so close, you know, just three seconds, really makes you think, you know, what, what was the key detail that, that was in the setup that made that happen? You know, things like the special muck off chain or, you know, the Pirelli tires, or, you know, the difference between having a bespoke skin suit versus just a sort of standard off the peg one. You know, all these little things they really do add up. I just think, you know, if I'd not done any one of the details that are on that bike, then that would have been enough for me just not to scrape in under, under 20 minutes and 30 miles an hour, which, yeah, it's a, it's a source of contemplation. But of course you could go 30 miles an hour off fewer watts than I did. You could be more aerodynamic. I'm six foot one and that CDA figure I mentioned earlier of 0.186 is, is pretty good for someone of my height. But a smaller rider can get more aero, and we have seen diminutive riders with CDAs as low as 0.165. And again, that might just be a meaningless number to you, but it translates into requiring a power output of around 270 to 280 watts to ride 30 miles an hour for a 10 mile time trial, which, well, is considerably lower. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it interesting and appreciated seeing how quick you can go, even if you're just a, a mortal like me and don't have pro Tour de France watts. But if you have, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see my next project, which I'm gonna see if I can get Sai to do a 19 minute 10 mile time trial. So over 30 mile an hour average on a road bike. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that.